maybe something's not right, maybe something's not quite right. Julie's fears have been confirmed by her genetic counsellors. She has an 80% chance of developing the disease. The test result come back. I left it on the table for about an hour, I think. I opened it, was absolutely gobsmacked. Could not believe I had it. Just could not believe it. Um, I got really angry. Then I started crying. What the decision is that you've made? Um, to have a double mastectomy, which is... I'm doing it where they are removing all my tissue inside my breasts. I am keeping my own skin and my own nipples, um, and then they will put an implant into that. But it is the kind of mutilation of your body. Yeah, but it, if it's keeping me alive, then... That's, that's how I look at it, you know. The worst thing about it is the only part of my body I actually really like are my bust because as you get older, everything goes in different directions. and <laughs> You get cellulite and varicose veins and everything. But my boobs have always stayed the same. They've stayed in the same place. It's the only part of my body that I think, yeah, they don't look too bad for a woman my age. And so that, I, that side of it, you know, to start with, I'm thinking, why my bust? Why couldn't it have been my bum cheeks or something? Why did it have to be my bust? But now it, it's... I know I'll be fine. It would just take me a while to get used to them again. Inherited breast cancer arises from flaws on the BRCA genes on chromosome 13 and 17. These are the flaws that my family may have and which are more common among people who share our Jewish heritage. And although I'm a man, I can still get breast cancer. And these genes increase the risk of cancer of the prostate. My aunt's test results have arrived. Thought we would see it. Let's see what we've got. No faults have been detected in the BRAC1 or 2 genes in your sample. The result reduces the possibility that you develop cancer because of an inherited genetic fault. How do you feel about this, Judy? Yes, I think I'm, I'm pleased. I think um, I, I'm ambivalent. It seems like almost that you think that there's definitely a gene there and not finding it just leaves open the possibility it's somewhere else. I still think that it just means they haven't found it yet. I think it's really good news in a way. I mean, you know, I think it's really good news because I think... It had more of an impact from you in a way because I've already had at least one cancer <laughs> and therefore my risk was probably lower of having another one, yeah. whereas you're in the situation of looking to the future. Good, yes. <laughs> So, from your point of view, what do you understand that that now means for you? I think that reduces the likelihood that I've got those genes, that I've got the mutations. Because your mother still had breast cancer young, and her mother had breast cancer, and there's all those other breast cancers, it's possible that Judith might have had it just as a sporadic breast cancer. We can test you to see if you have one of the Ashkenazi Jewish mutations, which might explain why your mother had breast cancer. So. It, it, it reduces the chance a bit for you, but it's still possible that there could be a, gene muta a different gene mutation or a gene mutation that your mother had, which you might have inherited. Is there any sense of how likely it is that I might have one of those mutations? At the moment, the chances for you of having a gene mutation are higher than other people in the general population. If your mother had it, then you would have a 50-50 chance of having inherited it. OK, so if you want to go ahead, we can take the blood sample today. So even with Aunt Judith in the clear, my mother might still have had a bad gene. And so might I. This needle will give insights into my family's tragic history.
and it could offer the promise of a healthier future. It'll be two weeks until the result arrives. Julie's also in hospital, preparing for her breast removal. From the, obviously, the mastectomy point of view, yeah. have you thought about preserving the nipple? Not I'd, I'd like to keep, like to I'd keep just it. like to have the insides taken out and the right. skin and the nipple left. And the risk reduction from the mastectomy in general amount to about 90%. There is some indication yeah. that if the nipple left behind, this may compromise this risk by about 1%. In other words, instead of 90% risk reduction, it will be 89% risk reduction. I think reduction. I can live with that. You can live with that. Yeah, I can live with that. <laughs> it changes everything. It changes the way you think. And you regret having a test then? Yeah. Yeah, because I never wanted it done. If, if it came back that you had it, how would you feel? I don't know really. Until mm. today, I thought, oh, you know, everybody's died of cancer. I'm, I'm bound to get it in the long run. So mm. knowing might be a good thing, but seeing you go through today, I'm not, you know. I don't think anyone can answer it until it happens. Because I was so positively sure that I didn't have it, yeah. that it really knocked me for six. Yeah. Well, I mean, what I want them to say is that I haven't got it and everything's fine. Yeah, but it's not going to happen like that. Sometimes I think it's best not knowing. That's how I feel. It's best not to know. But there is another reason why I do want to know. What about any children I may have? Could I prevent them from inheriting the cancer gene? Tracy and Thomas are asking the same question. They don't have the breast cancer gene, but something else. A piece of Thomas's chromosome 1 has swapped places with a part of chromosome 6. It means Tracy's never been able to have a healthy baby. The whole reason we found out was due to miscarriages and the loss of our boys. When Tracy fell pregnant with the twins, <laughs> overjoyed more than what we could ever hope for, went into premature labour and they, uh, they didn't survive. We then had some genetic testing done, which we was found out and told that Tom had the uh, translocation of genes. And when they actually were doing um, history checks, they found out that actually my dad's got the same condition. We've been trying since we got married, so it's been four years. I'm glad that at least there's some hope out there that we could have at least one child. Now they're embarking on one of the most remarkable benefits of the genetic revolution, a procedure called pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, PGD. So that's the needle there in the follicle. And if you watch, when I put the suction onto the um, needle, the fluid in that follicle will will be sucked through the tubing and that follicle will gradually collapse. And that tube's now being passed to the embryologists and they will empty the fluid into a dish and look down a microscope to look for the presence of an egg in the dish. It's basically IVF. In a test tube, they'll fertilize Tracy's eggs with Thomas's sperm, hoping to produce the maximum number of embryos. You're definitely happy that it's finally on its way. We're getting there. Then comes the Wizzo science. They make a hole in the shell of each eight-celled embryo and suck out a single cell. These are then genetically tested, and if they find one that doesn't contain Thomas's chromosome fault, they'll transfer that embryo into Tracy. You know, we're just rolling the dice now. Sometimes we can be really lucky and the odds are, you know, in our favour. So, of the three, any of them might come back with a normal result. With PGD, elemental flaws of nature are now fixable by human hands.
I've come to Cambridge to meet Dan and Lizzie. When they met, they didn't know they each carried a flaw on the seventh chromosome. They only found out when the two flaws came together in Isaac. Am I right? You've got cystic fibrosis? Yes. And what does that mean? I have more coughs. You've got more coughs? Yeah. <coughs> no, come on, do a proper one. <coughs> Isaac is at risk of serious lung infections. He takes more than 30 pills a day and has to have regular physiotherapy. Jess's mucus is a lot thicker than a person without CF and uh, we're basically helping it all move around. So I can eat more cakes. That's what patty cakes is for. Yeah, so I love patty cakes. Because I get more cakes. And how will CF affect the rest of his life? It's um, degenerative, so he'll get worse as he gets older. <laughs> he has a heightened chance of lots of other things, such as CF-related diabetes, liver disease, um, osteoporosis. They talk about median life expectancy at the moment being 37. Every couple has a kind of an idea in their head of how many children they'd like. We always thought we'd have three or four. So suddenly to have one and know that we ha were carriers of this genetic disease. What's the chance of you giving birth to another CF child? One in four. Isaac has a good life, but it's, it's also quite a complicated life. And uh, I'd rather, rather not put another you know, child, if I, if I had an opportunity not to have a child with CF, I think we would, you know, we took, we took it with both hands really because it's not the nicest disease to have, really. So Lizzie and Dan opted for PGD. On their first attempt, one of their embryos was identified as not having the cystic fibrosis flaw. And it grew up to be the small and perfectly formed Anouk. The decision was undoubtedly the right one for our family and I have no you know no doubts about it at all now we have this um, wonderful healthy daughter sibling for Isaac and she's amazing and I look at her and I think she's a miracle of science some scramblers yes. how's the scramble egg look? she doesn't really talk you know <laughs> It's wonderful that diseases like cystic fibrosis can be prevented from passing down the generations. But PGD is expensive. It costs the NHS £8,000 a cycle, and most cycles fail. It's time for Tracy to discover whether the hospital has found a good embryo. I was shocked when they phoned me and said that there was only six out of the 20 that fertilised, and I was a bit shocked by that. I then get the call this morning saying that only three are viable for the biopsy. I was like, okay, not what I was expecting. So I'm certainly nervous. It's the worst thing ever. So sitting there, you're constantly watching it, and it's when you don't look, that's when it rings. That could be them. Hello? Brilliant. It certainly is. Oh, are you okay? Yeah, just glad at least one's come back fine. Bizarre going down from 20 eggs down to one. Certainly a, a big drop, but at least there was one that was absolutely fine, which is fantastic. Twenty four hours later, the one good embryo is delicately placed inside Tracy's womb. Now they must wait again to see if she is pregnant. Well done, that went very well. Fingers crossed. Let's see yeah. how we go. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Obviously we'd still be a bit concerned with what's happened in the past with obviously premature labour, but I think we're going to be a bit more at ease knowing that 
at least we know it's balanced or normal.